So hey guys, welcome to my first video. Um, I am gonna try and uh, get this to be concise, um, not too long. Just give you like a little bit of an introduction for now. Um, but the purpose of this channel is to really help people who are interested in pursuing medical school in Pakistan. And I feel like there isn't much out there on YouTube for this. So that's why I started this. I know I'm not as entertaining as probably other YouTubers, but I'm going to try and get used to this whole thing. So getting admission into MBBS program in Pakistan is a foreign national. So essentially what I mean by that is someone who's like living in Canada, in America, in UK, and you know, they're interested in not going through the whole undergrad process and doing the bachelor's degree and they just want to go right into med school, five year program in Pakistan. and they want to know how the whole process works, what, it, what are the fees, what, what are the stresses involved, because there's a lot of stress when it comes to all of this. Um, I am going to warn you about that. So, and the other thing is really knowing if you can actually adapt to Pakistani environment, and especially if you've been outside, if, you, if you're like a foreign to the country and you haven't visited it as often. So, um, these are all just questions we all have in our mind, like what's the process, you know, how does it all work? Um, and uh, there is a lot of like rumors and I guess misconceptions out there about how the whole process works. So, you know, just to give you an idea of like, you know, what are the paths you can choose for yourself and to let you give, to give you like a right sort of guide because I know I didn't have that and it was hard figuring out the process. So. You know, it was just me and a couple of my friends, my and like some of my friends who were also interested in us trying to figure out, you know, how does this whole thing work? Um, so let me just go back right here. Okay, so you have you got yourself four paths. The path I chose for myself is the first one, Pakistan Technical Assistant Program. The other one is a self finance scheme, which most of you are probably aware of in Pakistan. Um, and then third is direct application to colleges, and then fourth is private medical colleges. So in Pakistan, you've got two types of colleges. You've got the government ones, and you've got the private ones. Private ones are obviously much more expensive, like Aga Khan, and then you've got some like, you know, in the middle ones, government ones like Dow and, you know, Sindh, and there's King Edward. Um, and yeah, so these are the four paths. So let's talk about Pakistan Technical Assistance Program because many people actually don't know about this. So um, there's 20 MBBS seats and two BDS seats. BDS is dentistry, MBBS is medical. Um, internationally, there's 20 MBBS and two BDS. You need to have passed your 12th year outside of Pakistan, which is your high school. You need to do the SAT two subject test. It's highly competitive and it's only for specific government colleges only. They have a list of institutions online on their website. Um, and the other thing is you pay local fees. So it's kind of like a scholarship and it's all, it's just completely merit-based, okay? So there's 20 people that make it. So if you've got good grades, you might be able to make it. Um, and then the other one is self-finance game. It's highly expensive, so get yourself thousands of dollars. It isn't as competitive and you have to apply through HEC, Higher Education Commission. And I'll link all those websites down below um, just so you could see each of their websites. And they have a lot of helpful information on their websites. Um, and you also need to do the SAT And I'll talk about those in a while. Um, direct application to, to colleges. You're going to have to know which medical college to contact. Apply through their own, uh, own application system as a foreign national. Um, and there are a designated number of seats in each college usually. You need to do the SAT two subjects as once again, thousands of dollars. So it's like $18,000 for Dow. But you know, there's some other colleges where it's like only 6,000. I believe there's one in Peshawar. Um, and this, you can apply to this even through like the self-finance scheme, like it'll be the same amount of money. Um, private medical college, Alhan, I mean, super awesome, great. You know, you, you, got, you got yourself the best of the best, okay? It prepares you for the American exams, USMLE. You need to do both the SAT-1 and the SAT-2, and it's around $25,000 a year, which is not an affordable thing for everyone. Um, so more details to each path. So um, I went through with PTAP. I know not everyone's going to go with PTAP. Not everyone has the grades to go with PTAP. So I think, I believe if, if you really want to see where you're going to fit in, I think you should apply to like basically every path. You should um apply to through the self-finance you should apply to ptap 
even apply to like a direct college yourself or something like that. You know, you should try multiple things just to be on the safe side. Um, so to do medical school in Pakistan as a foreign national, you do need to do the SAT two, two subject tests. You can do math or physics. Um, you can choose between math or physics. You got to do biology and chemistry. So three subject tests. Um, they're going to, I'm going to talk more about them. So you do not have to do the entry test MCAT in Pakistan. The SETs are basically a kind of, you know, your version of like, they, they'll accept it as an MCAT for you because you're a foreign national. So, you know, you doing the MCAT is over there in Pakistan is not going to make sense because you haven't been in their system. Um, so even through PTAP and all of those, you got to just do the SAT too, which I feel like it makes it much more easier because um, the SAT just two subjects tests are fairly easier um, than the MCAT and it's less competitive as well um, because Pakistan's own basically medical system is very competitive. It's not that easy to kind of get in. Um, so the SAT is basically American system. They're American exams. There's no, not much more to it to explain, but the subject tests are one hour, one hour long exams for each subject. So you have chemistry and you have a one hour long exam for that. You have biology, one hour long exam for that. You can do up to three exams in a day. They give you like a, a break between each exam. So you do have a break. You don't just like do them like continuously for three hours. Um, and there are locations internationally that administer these exams. You don't have to go to America for it. Um, and the way you do is you make an account on College Board, and I'll link College Board down below, and apply to write these subjects. And they happen on specific days at specific locations. They do have a fee, and international fees are greater. And if you apply late, they have late fees too, and it's, there's a huge process involved, right? So yes, you're going to have to pay a sum of money to actually do these tests. Um, SAT 1 is only required for like some private college, uh, private medical universities and colleges like ATU, Aga Khan. Um, because, and it is much more difficult than the SAT 2 because it is accompanied with English and essay. It's three hours long. It has a little bit of difficult math. It's, it's very comprehensive, I would say, um, but Aga Khan requires it. So if you're interested in Aga Khan, you're probably going to have to do the SAT 1. I've never done it, so I don't want to speak too much about it, but the SAT 2, two subject tests, I can definitely guide people on that. So, SAT 2, two subject tests. So, um, so you have to do three subject tests, math or physics, biology, and chemistry. So in math, you have math level one or math level two. You have an option. Physics is just a straight up physics exam. And then with biology, you have biology E and biology M. Biology E deals with ecology and biology M with micro, microbiology. Um, so biology M is a little more difficult. And then with math, math level two is a little more difficult. And then you have just simple chemistry. Um, they have around like, uh, they have basically MCQs, numerical response, things like that, right? Um, and the other thing you have to understand is uh, for the chemistry, they also have true and false. And um, see, I'll talk about the questions format and the scoring because it's a little confusing. Um, and Pakistan will accept your physics or your math. I know here in Pakistan, it's required, you know, physics is required, but they'll accept your math too. Don't worry about that. Um, so grading system, it's out of 800. Don't want to go too much into it. Just want to do a separate video explaining the details on the grading system. There's negative marking, so you're going to lose points for getting a question wrong. Um, there's an online percentage chart or like um, score chart type of thing which tells you, you know, what's a 640, like a score of 640, what does that mean? How much percentage did you get and is that a good score? You know, there's, there's online charts that they give that give you a little bit of an idea of uh, how the scores work. So you need at least 550 to apply anywhere, like even through South Finance, you need 550. Um, and in this test, you're basically being tested on speed and accuracy. So you're gonna have to do a lot of questions, but you're gonna have to do them right. Because if you don't, if you do the wrong, you're gonna lose a lot of points and you don't wanna do that. So it's about getting the questions right and doing a lot of questions. So it's really about speed and accuracy. So you'll have quite a few unanswered questions in the end, but that's fine. Um, and there's a different number of questions for each exam. Each exam has its own details and it works differently. But I feel like a lot of it is memorization based that once you learn it, once you memorize it, you're probably going to be able to do it except for the math.